She missed most of the last two years with the injuries. But former National Player of the Year, Paige Beggers, is back, and she is ready to fall tonight against Notre Dame on Fox Prime Time. Who? Welcome to the home of champions. 11 national championships for the women, five for the men. This is Stores Connecticut, and this is Connecticut basketball, where tonight, Notre Dame comes into town out of the ACC to take on the Big East UConn Huskies. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson, along with former All-American, former national champion, former top WNBA pick, Stephanie White, and welcome to Gamble Pavilion. Steph, we get a chance to see two of the best point guards in the nation and two of the premier programs in women's basketball. No question about it. And the Irish are led by a freshman phenom, Hannah Hidalgo. She really has carried this ball club through an injury-riddled season. Leads the team in scoring. Is tops in the nation in steals as well. And Paige Buckets, she is back and she is better than ever. Carrying the load for this Huskies team. Doing it on both ends of the floor and flat out dominating. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. And Steph, who jumps out at you for the Fighting Irish and the Huskies? But for the Irish, it's Sonia Citron. She's got to be able to knock shots down from the three, use her versatility offensively. And for the Huskies, Aaliyah Edwards. I don't think the Irish have an answer for her inside. Your officials, happy birthday to the crew chief, Joseph Vazili, his mom, Joe, his father, rather, Joe and Mary Beth are watching this game, joined by Denise Brooks and Karen Priata. So Notre Dame and UConn, what should we expect to see early on in this one? Well, right away, Notre Dame trying to go to Maddie Westbelt on the switch inside. First shot off for Hidalgo, and here come the Huskies. Their last game, they beat Marquette 85. 59 in Milwaukee on Tuesday. Back door. There's a long jump shot. Brick picked up by the Fighting Irish. These are two teams who really want to push pace in transition. There's not going to be a lot of time between shot opportunities. Hidalgo with the teardrop, and that goes down. And this young lady has been doing some awfully good things in her freshman year at Notre Dame. The other one, well, another freshman, KK Arnold, in the starting lineup for the last 13 games, and they haven't lost one since she's been in there. And Gino Ariema talks about K.K. Arnold. She is a player who doesn't think too much, just plays. Mule called for the foul, and you go back a long way with Neil Ivey, the head coach, in her fourth season at Notre Dame. Teammates for the Indiana Fever, certainly am so proud of Neil's accomplishments, and she's doing an outstanding job leading this program. I heard she has a son that was a pretty good college player. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing all right in the NBA. And he's doing all right. Jaden Ivey for the Detroit Pistons. Well, here come the Fighting Irish. They lost to Syracuse the 22nd ranked team in the nation, 79-65 Thursday in South Bend. Went into kind of a slump at the end of that game. They did, the second half had trouble, find at the bottom of the net. Syracuse has had their number this season. Swept by Syracuse this season, first time they've ever lost to Syracuse in the history of the program. Meanwhile, what can you say about Gino Oriema? 69 years old, 11 national titles, 22 Final Fours, 27 regular season conference titles, 27 conference tournament titles, the 2006 Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. And going to his practice yesterday, he's just as cranky as he's always been. <laughs> if you ask some of these players that they honored pregame, they'd probably say he's softened up a bit. He's got a lot of thank yous for Rebecca Lobo because back then in 2000, or make that 1995, she led him to that first national title. Baseline and a whistle. And this is out of bounds. Looks like Shade steps on the baseline out of bounds. 
go right away. You're going to see both of these teams get after it on the defensive end of the floor. Lots of switching, trapping opportunities, being disruptive in the quarter court. Notre Dame starting this game two for five. Citra puts it on the deck. She'll get it back. Uses the screen. Hesitation to the bucket. Scoop. No. Pulled down by Ashton Shade. She'll rig it and take it into the front court. Well, missed opportunity to find Aaliyah Edwards inside. Here she is, top of the key. Aaliyah Edwards. Aaliyah Edwards is solid. She's just consistent. You know what you're going to get every single day from her. She's improved on the offensive end of the floor. It takes ownership of the paint. Canadian international. She hails from Toronto, Canada. Hidalgo from South Jersey. Could have gone anywhere. Including Duke, Stanford, Ohio State. And Maddie Westbelt with the big bucket, 6-4 Notre Dame. Right away, you see UConn switching all screens. And for the Irish, it's finding the right mismatch. Being able to deliver inside or attack off the bounce like Manny Westville did. Hidalgo, 16-footer, and she gets the bounce. She's tough, man, all three levels. Gets to the rim, float game, pull up, three-point shot, and competitive fire. McDonald's All-America, and as you mentioned, she's better on the defensive end. She's one of the most prolific Thieves in all of women's basketball. Steal. Nice show. Edwards lost it on the way up. Saved it. Loose ball and a foul coming up. Edwards goes down hard, maybe on her tailbone, and she will stay down momentarily. Yeah, this is a tough ball right here. And the wolf just gets underneath Aaliyah Edwards as she's trying to get the ball out. It takes a tough, hard fall. And the Wolf call for the foul. Her first. Eight four Notre Dame on the road, trying to bounce back from that loss to Syracuse. Prior to that, they had won four in a row. Hidalgo off the Becker's miss, pushes it hard. Shade, another talented freshman in that starting lineup for the last 13 wins. Westbelt. KK Arnold double dribble. And UConn turns it over. Neither one of these teams has a lot of depth. Not a lot of production from the bench, but we're going to continue to see this pace. They both want to go. With all the injuries for both these teams, they're playing between seven and eight tops. Jivey telling me at the shoot around today, she's so happy that her team is starting to get back into the swing of things and healthy. Becker. KK Arnold to the cup. Rims off. Edwards with a rebound. And she's fine. And let's take a look at all these injuries for Connecticut. Yeah, you certainly look at when you think about Aubrey Griffin, who just lost to injury against Creighton earlier in the year, was giving him great minutes from the bench. AZ Fudd, who has been one of the premier players in the country, has not been able to stay healthy. Ayanna Patterson giving him great minutes a year ago. Caroline Ducharme as well. So Aaliyah Edwards at the line. What's the book on Aaliyah? Aaliyah Edwards is one of those players that you love to have on your team. She's physical, she's efficient, and she's reliable. You know what you're going to get every time she steps on the floor. And Aaliyah Edwards makes that second free throw. 8-6, Notre Dame. Watson guarded by Edwards. Westbell playing with the mask. Broke her nose and had a concussion. Deep jump shot. The Wolf, no, out of bounds, and we'll stay right here. So right there, Notre Dame had an opportunity on a mismatch on that rebound on the backside. But look at the hustle by Aaliyah Edwards to try to save the possession. She is not just rebounding in her area. She is chasing out, hunting the glass. 2022-23, third team All-American. Edwards. Hidalgo. And that's pure. And that's the matchup you won't see a lot of switching on, especially when the guard 
is coming off of the five. Aliyah Edwards will not switch out. Hannah Hidalgo is going to make a pay. Hidalgo averaging 24 points a game, six rebounds, six assists. As Arnold backs it up. Mule, 16-footer. Count. Make that Ashland Shade with the basket. And that's a 10-8 game. And Ashland Shade has been a pleasant surprise for Gino Oriano. Wasn't expected to step into the starting lineup, but has elevated her game. Time out on the floor. 4.20 to play first quarter. Competitive game to start. Notre Dame up by a deuce. Fox Primetime Hoops is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one Gamble Pavilion on the campus of Connecticut. Our score, Notre Dame, on top of the Huskies, 10-8. Let's take a look at the season in review for the Fighting Irish. They dropped their season opener versus South Carolina, number six at the time. They were blown out in that game. They've won 14 of their last 17 games. Freshman phenom Hannah Hidalgo is one of two major conference players averaging 20-plus points, 5-plus rebounds, and 5-plus assists. Guess who the other one is? Caitlin Clark. And I was so excited to come watch this game. Definitely to see Hidalgo, but also to see Paige Beckers. Beckers, as a freshman, was the National Player of the Year. The back-to-back -back seasons with bad knee injuries have kept her out. She's healthy now, and it's Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers, two of the best players in all of America. Meanwhile, Westbell with great position inside. Great call off the timeout by Coach Ivy. Well, the Ivy loves to utilize Maddie Westbelt's versatility, get her touches. She says she's the glue of our team, and Ashlyn Shade gets another bucket. Ashlyn Shade from your part of the world. Noblesville, Indiana. That's right. She's an Indiana girl. The Indiana girls, yeah. And a steal. Alicia Edwards chases it down, gathers it, pumps, gets to the bucket, and makes it. Yeah. I talked to Alicia her sophomore year. Her numbers work very good. Offensively, I said, what happened? She said, I was in a slump, period. I'm not in a slump anymore. She's putting up great numbers right now. The dog goes, trying to shake up. Pulls up off the bounce, no. Shane with a rebound. Becker. Hey, if you're gonna ice Paige Beckers, not let her come off of that screen, the big has to close the gap. You can't give her that much space. You want to see, they're going to jump this on ball screen. They're going to keep Paige Beckers from using it. That's called icing, but Maddie Westbelt has to be able to close the gap tighter and quicker because Paige Beckers doesn't need a lot of time or space, and she'll make you pay. She shoot 57% from the floor. We're talking about a guard. Beckers, Hopkins, Minnesota. Tell you what, a lot of these uh, Midwestern girls are showing what basketball is about. You got Caitlin Clark from Iowa, Beckers from Minnesota. I'm sitting here next to you, a head coach of the WNBA and with the Connecticut Indiana Sun. Girl, that's right. That's right. Give it a buckets. So you're going to have to give us a scouting report on everything you see today, coach. Because I know uh, Indiana has the number one overall pick in the W. They sure do. Where are you guys picking? They sure do. We're number 10. Uh -oh. That's our O for now, but that means we did all right, right? So. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, many have compared their careers. They're different kind of players. Gina or Emma says that Caitlin Clark is Pistol Pete and Paige Beckers is Larry Bird. But here's their numbers, and I think what's very important and very interesting to look at is shots per game. Attempts, 13 for Beckers, 22 for Clark. Yeah, I mean, the efficiency that, that Paige Beckers plays with, 57% from the floor, 49% from three, and does a little bit of everything. And same with Caitlin Clark. Now, they're surrounded by different types of teammates, different types of, of systems. There's no doubt about it. But two of the premier ball players 
Get the game. And they are very familiar with each other. As a matter of fact, they go back a long way. Beckers and Clark, how about this picture? That's Caitlin Clark on the left, Paige Beckers on the right. Before they took the college basketball world by storm, Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark helped Team USA win the gold medal at the 2019 FIBA Under-19 World Cup. Since then, both have won National Player of the Year award. And I was at the, the Ohio State-Iowa game in Columbus last weekend. Peyton Clark had 46, and she never got high. Unbelievable. 100 to 92. And they lost the game. And they lost the game. We got them next week. Next week? At Maryland. In College Park against Maryland. Maryland any good this That's year? That's right. They Maryland's had their there. struggles a little bit this year. But they're going to be up for that one. And I was talking to Paige at the shoot-around yesterday. I said, Paige, when are you going to give us 50? This would be a good night to give them. Give us 50 on Fox Primetime Hoop. She says, I'm just trying to help my team. Yep. Get out of my face, man. <laughs> oh, man. Here's Hidalgo. Guarded by KK Arnold. That's a great matchup to pay attention to tonight. It sure is. KK Arnold's going to pressure and Hidalgo, force her into tough shots. Hidalgo running the pick and roll, draws Edwards. Hidalgo off the bounce. That one partially blocked. Saved from going out of bounds. UConn has it. That's Mule with the save. Edwards shows it. Inside. Drop step. Left hand. Hook no good. Diagonal. Westbell can't hold up. Mule the other way. Up top, Edwards again. She's found the distance. The versatility, the ability to be able to play with her back to the basket, attack off the bounce, and knock it down from 15 feet. An 8 0 Husky run. 16 12. Connecticut and a whistle offensive foul call. This will go against Kylie Watson. Well, you're going to see the pad right here. Kylie Watson playing off of Aaliyah Edwards and gives her that space. And look at that space in between. Aaliyah Edwards has developed that 15 to 17 foot shot. She feels comfortable and confident in that shot, and she will make you pay. Kylie Watson picked up her second foul, so she has to go to the bench, replaced by KK Bransford. Young lady out of Cincinnati who's been scoring the ball extremely well over the last six games for Notre Dame. Beckers to the hole. Pull up jump shot. In and out. Hidalgo, smallest player on the court with the rebound. One twenty to play. First quarter. 16-12. 54th meeting between these two rivals. A series that dates back to 96. Hidalgo inside, and she's fouled by Mule. Uh, Leah Edwards has come to play. Eight quick points. She's showing the array of her game inside, outside, physicality, finesse. Having that interior presence, having the versatility and physicality of Aaliyah Edwards has been critical to the Huskies' success. <laughs> Foul called on Nika Mule, her second, second team foul against Connecticut. And it sends Hidalgo to the line. She leads the nations in steals per game at 5.4. And what's the book on Hannah Hidalgo? Well, this exciting young player brings it every day. Her competitive fire, her ability to play make for herself and for others, and flat out lock down defender. You get a lot of young players who are good and who are ready on one end or the other. Very rarely do you get one that's ready on both ends, and she certainly is. KK Arnold the other way. Edwards facing. Beckers. 
Baseline, that one will go down. I tell you what, this Ashley Shane can put the biscuit in the basket. She's got six already. Hey, this is a player who first nine games of her career averaged under seven points a game. And since then, 16, she's found her confidence. Since they put the two freshmen in the starting lineup, Connecticut has won 13 in a row. Hidalgo. And that's the freshman duo of K.K. Arnold and Ashley Shade. The ATM, folks, <laughs> is open. Hey, that was one of those no, 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 okay, yes, that went in. Nice Brady with the three right there. That's a big momentum shift in play. 21-14. Zitron and a whistle. That basket. Not necessarily sure what the call is. Yeah, it looked like Joe Vasily said the shot didn't even count. She didn't get it off in time. Ten minutes to play, first half. Notre Dame, Connecticut, back after this. the game, UConn celebrated the 20-year anniversary of the 2003-2004 National Championship teams, as well as the 10th year anniversary of the 2013 and 2014 National Championship teams. Diana Taurasi, one of the greatest players in the history of the game of basketball. She's only done this stuff, folks. Five-time Olympic gold medalist, three-time national champ at UConn. 2003, A-plea college player of the year, three-time WNBA champion, first WNBA player to score 10,000-plus points. She also made a whole bunch of money playing in Europe. Folks, aside from Cheryl Miller, we got the GOAT with us right here. <laughs> you know what? take that any day. Cheryl's a close friend, L.A. native, so that's good company. Well, first of all, thank you very much for joining us. It's an honor and a privilege for us to be able to talk to you. What's it feel like when you come back home? I mean, it's UConn? amazing. I haven't been in this in Gamble in probably 18 years. Really? So, you know, every time you come back, you see all these familiar faces, and it's home. I spent my four years of college here, and uh, to see Coach and our coaching staff, it's, it's a cool moment. It's full circle. 18 years, and you see all of the alum that are back. Yeah. How often have you guys been back and in the same building together. You know, not very often. Obviously, everyone's busy with their, you know, the WNBA careers, the European careers, life. Yes. Uh, so when you get to see everyone come back and, and see how much they've evolved as people and, you know, you get to share stories when you were in college, uh, it's a pretty special moment for us uh, here in Connecticut. All right, let's test your basketball IQ now. What are you seeing this year with this UConn team? Uh, 13 straight wins. Yeah. They struggled a little bit early, and they've been having some injury problems. Well, you know, injury aside, uh, you know, you can never control that. I still think they have enough. Obviously, I think they have the best player in college in Paige. Uh, I haven't seen someone with that basketball sense in a long time. Obviously, there's great players across the country. Aaliyah, this team is gritty. And, you know, you could go a long way with a gritty team. Steph, you know that. Yeah, you, sure you know, you love coaching that gritty, that gritty team. team. This, yeah, that's right. Hey, we were having this conversation about, about Coach Oriema. Yeah. Gus was saying he was he was pretty cranky in practice. I said y'all would probably say he's pretty soft now compared to what he used to be. What do you, you think? Well, you can't yell at anyone anymore, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> with no Twitter way. and TikTok, right. you can't really get down with, uh, you know, how we used to coach. Right. Uh, but he does it in different ways. He still challenges them every single day in practice, mentally. Um, you know, he always holds you to the standard, whether you're playing Notre Dame on national TV or preseason. There's a standard he holds you to, and that's why we've had the success, and, and the banners prove it. 23-14, Connecticut starting to take over now as Marshall stops the bleeding with the bucket. Now, you said that Paige Beckers is a best player in America. I mean, there's a girl in Iowa, a young lady in Iowa, that some feel is pretty good. Look, she had 46 the other night. Your kind of numbers. Caitlin Clark is an absolute monster. Um, you know, she's one of a kind. She's an alien. <laughs> she, she's an alien. What she's doing at Iowa right now is unheard of. It'll probably never be done again. And I know we always say that, and it's very cliche. Um, you know, and I think the 
just two very different players. Um, if either of them want to come out this year and come to Phoenix at number three, I'm ah, more than happy shoot. to take them. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> and, and a lot of young talent. I don't know yeah. how much you've been able to watch across the country, but certainly three freshmen on the floor here that are making impacts. But freshmen across the country, like, what do you think about the, these guys that you're seeing in real time? I mean, look, the game has just grown so much. Um, you know, they're coming into college way more prepared than we were yeah. 20 years ago. You know, the resources are there, the strength and conditioning. You see what Juju's doing out in L.A. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I, I mean, you have these kids that are pro-ready playing in college, which is impressive. You were like that, though, in college. I have a lot to learn in college. I you know, don't think I ever had a <laughs> chance to see a, a person, a player, a women's player with so much command. Where'd you get your game from growing up in California? Well, you know what? I just love to play. I love to compete. Um, you know, I think my Italian Argentinian hot blood um, plays into that a little bit, but I'm just, I just like, like to compete. I love the game and I still do. And, uh, you know, when I see these games and uh, I come back and, and I'm in the setting, it just it makes you want to play. It makes you want to get out there. Well, you've been in the WNBA, what, yep. 20 years now? Going on 20 years, so, yeah. How, how long? Do you think you're going to keep going? You know what, G? I just take it day by day. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> I take it day body by feel, day. Body feels days. good. Everything I, feels good. I feel good. Best I've felt in a long time. Um, you know, we had a rough season last year, um, you know, as a franchise, but, you know, things are looking good. I see your your your, your homie, Sue Bird, is here with you sitting next to each other. You know, it's always going to have Sue around. That's my, that's my big man. And, I saw your, um, your quote unquote Manning cast last year during the Women's Final Four. That was really good. You know, I'm trying to learn from you. <laughs> It's nice being on this side, Seth. What are you lot, coaching for? That's a, a lot, lot of hard work. A lot less pressure, right? Yeah, it's nice over here. You get to see, yeah, there they are. Look at that. Look you at got Hollywood. Ted Lasso with you, too. And Megan Rapino, the great, who just retired. Uh, we're in good company. Yeah, you certainly are over there. We're in good company. No doubt about it. Jason Sudeikis in the building, a big fan of women's sports. So right now, 3018, Connecticut. Be a goldfish, right? Be a goldfish. A Absolutely. Six second memory. Meanwhile, inside, that's Marshall. She's a New York City product coming off the bench. Nicely done there to cut the lead to 10. When you look at college basketball, yeah. last year, uh, LSU, as well as South Carolina and Iowa, some of the best teams in the country. What do you see it this year when you look at the landscape? Tara Vanderveer and Stanford still playing well. I mean, just from watching, I think South Carolina right now is um, a cut above. You know, their athleticism, the way they're playing, Don has them playing amazing basketball, and they're just tough. They just, you know, they're 10 deep and they're tough. Um, and I think everyone else is, you know, I think still searching for a little bit of their identity going down the stretch. And you know, it, you have to have luck, gotta have health, yep. and uh, you know, all those things are still, you know, yet to, to be determined. A lot more parity than we've seen in a long time. Absolutely, you know, with this NIL stuff, people aren't just going to one school, you know. Um, and I think you you saw that early with a lot of teams losing. Obviously, LSU preseason number one, and they lost early. Connecticut with some, you know, tough early losses, but. You know, this this tournament is going to be as open as it's been. Bang! Dang! Citron knocks down a triple. How about NIL? If you were playing today, your NIL would be crazy. Oh, man, I want my back pay. <laughs> <laughs> I want my back pay. I still see the jersey in the co-op, and I'm like, man, they're still making money uh -huh. off of us. <laughs> you don't get a kickback on that hey, nowadays? You know what, though? It's just a different landscape, and... Um, I'm, I'm happy for these kids. Um, I don't envy them at all. It's just a whole different type of lifestyle when you're getting paid as a 19-year-old. Yeah. Um, it's a different responsibility that you carry. And I've been around these guys for the last two days, and they're just great young ladies, and they're just so prepared, and they're so professional already. It's, it's really been a delight to be around them. Did you practice with them a little bit? No, I practiced this morning with Stewie a little bit. So we got How'd in the, the practice. Oh, good. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. Diana Taurasi, folks. They don't get better than this young lady sitting next to me. 41 years old now. Yep. Uh, there's nothing else left to accomplish except for the love of the game to continue to play. Man, it's so wonderful to have an opportunity to sit here and talk to you. Speaking of love of the game, this rivalry has always been hot. You know, yes. it's one of those understated yes. rivals, but we don't, we don't ever put it with the Duke and North Carolina, maybe the Connecticut and Tennessee, but there is some inherent hatred between these two teams. <laughs> And you know, it's not one of those nice rivalries either. But these players don't get it. Like, you know these what? players don't get it. They don't get it, but coach makes you understand it pretty yeah. quickly. And, you know, Neil Ivey, who's been doing a great job, we played together in, in Phoenix. And, uh, you know, I was a part of those teams that, that she beat back in the day. So. <laughs>
Uh, she knows it too. Looks like a traveling violation coming up against Edwards. Well, Diana, thank you so much. Absolutely. I uh, know we don't. We want to get you back to your friends and watching the game and your alma mater. But you are the best. Appreciate Legends. You. Appreciate you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Thank you so much. 5:50 to play. 30 to 26. Connecticut inside that one off the glass by Westbelt won't go down but Notre Dame Johnny on the spot and the lead is now down to two 10-0 run for the Irish one of the questions for the Ivy was could they handle the moment a lot of these players haven't been in this type of environment and they have answered that call Citron swatched that one out of bounds on the KK Arnold drop This is just terrific defense. Citron using her length, the ability to get a hand on it. Keep Arnold from the easy two. Becker's quick release in and out. And the rebound goes to Westbelt and a foul call. Brady reaching in. Nice Brady with her second third team foul against. Connecticut here in the second quarter 519 to go. You know, it's so different when you're used to calling a lot of men's games like I have been calling over the years and they come back and call a women's game and we got quarters. It's yeah. better. Yes, it flies, doesn't it? It's more of a flow. It's more of a flow. Less dragging and slugging it out at the free throw line. Of course, I love the advance in the ball as well. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Citron. Beautiful play, and we're level at 30. Yeah, Sonia Citron's got to be more of a presence on the offensive end of the floor. She's a glue, but she can also get a bucket. Beckers, quiet so far here in the first half with under five to go. Edwards, though, trying to heat up inside, and it goes down. Aaliyah Edwards with a terrific first half. She has 11 points. And Connecticut takes a two-point lead. And a foul as Arnold tries to fight her way around the screen. And she fouls Citron. Diana Taurasi, one of the greats of all time, watching her alma mater. 4.30 to play in the second quarter. Connecticut up by a deuce. Let's take a look at the season in review for UConn. The Huskies started the season 4-3. and three. UConn, however, is currently on a 13-game win streak, winning by an average of 34 points per game. The Huskies' five wins versus top 25 opponents is tied for most in the nation with South Carolina and UCLA. So they've won 13 in a row. Four of those games are against top 25 teams. Yeah, this is a team who really had to find themselves again, reintegrating Paige Beckers. All right, let's take a look at this week in women's hoops. Hey, South Carolina goes on the road and pulls out the victory over LSU. That was an outstanding matchup. Caitlin Clark, four points shy of third all-time. OU got a big win against Texas and the upset yesterday. Oregon State's got Rubik's squad taking down number three, Colorado. The Pac-12 is exciting. I hate the fact that it's the last year of the Pac-12. Heartbreaking. Boy, they are bringing it out west. Becker's on the bench right now for Connecticut. Notre Dame starting to find themselves offensively. This is Marshall. And that's three buckets for Marshall. 14 to 2 run for Notre Dame. And that Marshall can be a big presence off the bench. She's had a few down, down days and down games, but she's finding herself again. Marshall, the, the mid-range, Sonia Citron knocking down the three. That was her first bucket in the game, and they were back-to-back -back with Hidalgo. It takes energy. It's going to be a game of runs. Who can withstand the runs? Who can stop the runs? Who can answer them quickly? 32 apiece. Four minutes to play. First tap, Hidalgo three. Kill. Man, I'm telling you what, this young lady, you know, not just her ability to make plays, but her confidence, her swag, her competitive fire. 
35-32. First lead for Notre Dame since the score was 12 to 10. Aliyah Edwards, Beckers, calling for the ball. Edwards can't get it to her. Five to shoot. Shade dumps it down. Short pace line. Jay goes in for Aliyah Edwards. The awareness of Aaliyah Edwards. She knew Ashlyn Shade was in trouble. She made herself available, understood where the shot clock was, and let it fly. And a foul coming up against Notre Dame. Offensive foul. I mean, this is just a heck of a play by Aaliyah Edwards. Make yourself available. I know I don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to waste any of it. Just go straight up into my shot. That's a veteran play and a veteran move. And the foul on the other end, KKR going to work against KK Bransford. Gets herself positioned and takes it. You see the emotion. This game means something. Bransford call for the foul. Her first. Beckers trying to create. To back it up. Pulls up off the dribble. Short. Can't get her own rebound. Leah Edwards does. Shade. And Hidalgo coming in with the rebound. She is fearless on the floor. Father was a coach. Coached her in high school. Hidalgo. Orlando. Dad. Mom. An official. And the impact players so far in this game. Hey, and one of the challenges and question marks for Notre Dame has been bench production. And Nat Marshall has given it to him in spurts this season. And she's come in and been big here tonight. Anna Hidalgo has been incredibly consistent for a young player. You know she's going to bring it. You know she's going give it, to give it to him. Natty Westbound and Sonia Citron have to take on more of an offensive load. And Marshall, on Thursday against Syracuse, she was scoreless 0 for 1 in nine minutes. But had a big 15.9 rebound performance off the bench against Tennessee. 37-34, Irish. And Notre Dame gets back into a 2-3 zone. And this, 22 to play. And this is what Notre Dame has to do, right? Without a lot of depth, try to keep UConn off balance, change up their defenses, but you got to still pressure the basketball. Make sure you're not giving up open looks. Citron, and she buries one in the corner. That's a two-point field goal, and Gino Oriema has seen enough. On his home court, Notre Dame with a 40-34 to 34 lead. 22 to 4 run. This is what Sonia Citron does. Shoots it at 41% from the three. In transition, Hidalgo finds her. Look at how much space and time. Closeout's not there. Citron knocks it down. The Irish bench love it. I know that's for sure, but you know where I am, but wants to talk about it. Citron's mom is from Senegal. She speaks a little French. Tomorrow on Fox, Jared Goff. Oh, my Lions. Hey. I can't believe that. Our producer Steve Shear put this one in. Jared Goff aims to lead the Lions to their first ever Super Bowl while Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, and the top seeded 49ers await the NFC Championship game Sunday at 6 Eastern on Fox. And the quarterback matchup. Jared Goff, who played in the Super Bowl before with the Rams, lost to New England, and Brock Purdy, the Iowa State product, who's his second NFL on fire as a late round draft pick. Should be a great Between Brock Purdy and Tyrese Halliburton, they're bringing Iowa State on the map. And we emerging on the map. Here's Citron with the steal. And layup. Sonny Citron with nine points all in the second quarter. And Sonny Citron is really finding herself again offensively. She went down in the third game of the year against Northwestern with that knee injury. Didn't come back until the Carolina game on January 7th. She's starting to find the flow of consistency offensively. Right now, UConn unable to find that flow of consistency, turning the basketball over. Seventh turnover of the game. Marshall, this time, she dials one up from the top of the key, no good. Shade. And dribbles it out of bounds. So that's back to back to back turnovers for Connecticut. The defensive energy and effort right now for the Irish has been very good. They're keeping Connecticut 
uncomfortable, changing up their defenses, forcing these young players to think about what to run, what kind of defense are they going to be in. We're talking about three freshmen on the floor right now for the Huskies. Citron thinking about it. Uses the screen. Finds a cutting Marshall. Nice catch by Marshall. And just really four freshmen. Ice Brady didn't play last season. Citron turns the corner hard, tries to get it up, and it is rejected out of bounds with three to shoot. This is a great defensive effort by Caden Samuels. You know, she's a player who has the ability to give what Aubrey Griffin did off the bench. Get to the rim, be a defensive stopper and a rebounder. West Bell short on the jump shot. Seven second differential, KK Arnold. And a foul. KK Arnold does such a good job of putting pressure on the rim. She's able to get by defenders, use her body to create contact. Nat Marshall called for the foul. Her second. KK Arnold from Germantown, Wisconsin. On the season, averaging 10 points. Three rebounds and three assists at 13 against Marquette on Tuesday. On five of eight shooting, four rebounds and a couple of steals in 29 minutes. Gina Oriema having no choice but to put KK Arnold and Ashlyn Shade in the starting lineup as freshmen. And they've won 13 in a row since the move. Out of bounds and Notre Dame basketball with 29.7 to go. Yeah, time and score right now. Certainly want to get the last shot of you're the Irish. Notre Dame will play for one shot. This young lady, Hannah Hidalgo, an outstanding first half. She may want to keep it or get it back. Bransford. Edwards going for the steal. And Notre Dame will hold on. West Bell. Looks like she got a little shove in there prior to the ball going out of bounds. Yeah, Joe Vasily was behind the play. He wasn't able to see the contact right here. Westbell really trying to keep Aaliyah Edwards off the ball and makes contact. Six seconds remaining in the first half. Hidalgo, two seconds. She's got to hurry. Straight away, jumper. Oh! And banks it down. At the end of the first half, Woo! Hannah Hidalgo. Because there are certain people who are just built for moments and games like this, and Hannah Hidalgo is one of them. Doesn't get what she wants, but makes a play anyway. And as you mentioned it, the ATM is open. She finds it. 19 points in the first half for Hannah Hidalgo, straight play maker. 26-5 run for Notre Dame to end the first half. And the Irish lead it 35 to 44 at the break. We'll send you to Rob Stone in Los Angeles for the Jeep halftime report right after this. The Fighting Irish, all business, Connecticut. They've got to make some changes. You're Primetime Hoops is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Welcome back to Gamble Pavilion. 9,882. That's 9882 in attendance. Sellout crowd as Notre Dame leads it 44 to 35, heading into the second half. Gus Johnson along with Stephanie White. Steph. UConn got up big in that game, and in the first half, rather, in this game at one particular time, but Notre Dame just reeled them in. They sure did. It was a game of runs, there's no doubt about it, and the Irish finish in that half, 26-5 to five run, predominantly because of their points in the paint, their activity level, their ability to get multiple players two feet in the paint, take advantage of mismatches, get out in transition. They had a 24-8 to eight advantage, and it was 14-4 to four in the second quarter.
As you take a look at the first half stats, Notre Dame 13-0 when leading at halftime this season. UConn 0 for 3 when trailing at halftime. Now let's take a look at our stat comparison sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Well, Hannah Hidalgo was special. 19 points. Stepped up in the moment. Sonia Citron got going. Aaliyah Edwards. Heavy touches for the Huskies, but Paige Beckers has to get going. They have to find ways to get her involved offensively. She's had multiple defenders thrown at her the entire first half. Do you know Ari Emma talked to us before the game, and he was saying Paige Beckers has not waited her turn. She's been aggressive from the jump. She wasn't very aggressive here tonight. They need more from her. Only four points in the first half for the former National Player of the Year. 44 points given up by UConn, the most Connecticut is allowed in a first half this season. The Wolf call for the foul, and that's her second. So we start the second half. Becker's straightaway jumper. P, P, and that is a nice jump. Hey, there was no way that she was going to come out in the second half and not be hunting shots. I don't know Gina Warrior, but challenging her to be more aggressive and to hunt looks. Meanwhile, Notre Dame aggressive. Maddie Westbell sealing the defender inside for the easy layup to make it a 46 to 38 game. She has 10. Back door. Becker's baseline big. Citron. She's got the wolf on the wing. Cut off by Edwards. Citron. Picks it up. Skips to the hole. Bat it out. Ashton Shea the other way. Crosses Owen Hook. Oh. Tricky, tricky, tricky for Ashton Shade, who has 10. Hey, I've been so impressed with the growth of Ashton Shade. She was struggling earlier in the year, found her comfort zone, and you're seeing her score at all three levels. I don't understand how an Indiana alum like yourself, Indiana, the state of Indiana, uh -huh. you went to Purdue. How'd you let her get out of the state? Hey, good question, good question. <laughs> Five to shoot. Hidalgo driving. Let's it go. Rebounded inside. Watson Hidalgo again a brick. Gets it again. Point blank range. Yeah, she's fine. Notre Dame out hustling Connecticut on the glass. Hey, first play of the ball game. Paige Beckers gets a touch. You can't go under the screen. Might have gotten away with a little one right there, but knocks down the three. And Ashlyn Shade showing you that she's got some handle and can get to the rim. But you mentioned it, the out hustling, the grit, the toughness, and Paige Beckers calls for that body foul right there. One of the keys for DLIB was we have to be a better rebounding team. And you're seeing that scrappiness here tonight. So Hidalgo. Second one in and out. Six point game. Yukon in a hurry. KK Arnold. The kick. Becker's D. Edwards offensive rebound and a foul. Aaliyah Edwards has been keeping this Connecticut team in this game. And she'll go to the free throw line and shoot two. Just watch where she comes from. We can't see it on our screen, but she came from the three point line. Now, oftentimes it's easy for Biggs to be like, oh, that's not in my area. She is hunting the boards, keeping possessions alive. Correction, she did not get a chance to shoot two. Misses the shot. Ball picked up as Notre Dame turns it over. KK Arnold and a foul coming up, a reach in against Hidalgo. Hidalgo, and I'm going to be interested to see if the second half is called the same way the first half was. A lot of physicality, letting both teams play, which I can appreciate certainly in the first half, and we'll see if it's the same. Becker's bounce pass, Edward, beautifully done. As they go high low. Edwards with 14. UConn cuts it to four. 
Paige Beckers is always going to draw multiple defenders, and she makes the right play, and there's Nika Mule getting on the floor. Mule with the steal. Arnold the other way. And a traveling violation called against Arnold. They say she double driven. Well, we're going to see Paige Beckers in action right here. Here she is coming off of the pin down. Now, when she goes, if we stop it right there, look at how many defenders are aware of Paige Beckers. And right away, the cut by Aaliyah Edwards makes herself available, is able to get an easy two. Hannah Hidalgo, 19 in the first half. Pick and roll to the cut. Oh, and in. Woo, she's got feline quickness with that ball in her hand. And, and you know what's so impressive is her balance. She's always on balance, has great body control. Adago, 21 points, 17 20 point game of the season. Edwards. A steady diet of Aaliyah Edwards, 16 now. Citra. Nice rebound. Mule the other way. 6.33 to play third quarter. Momentum starting to shift a little bit in the favor of Connecticut, even though they're down by four. Beckers looking, 15-footer, counted. You gotta decide how you're gonna play that. Do you either switch and try to fight Aaliyah Edwards, you throw the double page. Beckers has shown that she can find her open teammate. The catch is too easy, though. 48-46, a crowd back in the game now. Citron, that's an air ball. Out of bounds. Connecticut basketball. Well, Hannah Hidalgo, see her handle, her ability to get to the rim and stay on balance. And right here, Paige Beckers, they're going to continue to run this action. Aaliyah Edwards running free, this elbow action. What do you do? You double, she finds her open teammate. You don't switch, you back off, she knocks down a shot. And a steal, Hidalgo. Another steal, races up and in. Her instincts are just so good. She's got quick hands, her timing is impeccable, and her instincts are always on point. Averages 5.4 steals per game. 50 to 46, Notre Dame. Totally different looking team as opposed to Thursday as Edwards just pulls her way to the basket. I love it. The aggressiveness, the taking the contact. Muir, Euro, block. And out of bounds as KK Bransford sends that one away. But what a save by KK Bransford on the defensive end of the floor to be able to. Lock that shot without fouling, stay vertical. You know, you go back to the ability for Hannah Hidalgo to just have such quick instincts, the touch, the deflection by Sonia Citron. Hidalgo gets out in transition where she's so dangerous. Mule with the rebound. Becker kicks it back. Now, Edwards shows it. Lefty up and in. And we're level at 50. Aaliyah Edwards has put this team on her back. She's got 20. And a timeout, Notre Dame. Fifty-fifty. 4.48 to play, third quarter. Notre Dame and Connecticut. Let's take a look at the tournament resume for the Fighting Irish. Well, Notre Dame's a team that is sitting really nice there. Net 14, 14 and 4 overall. Stumbled a little bit in ACC play, but a team that's getting healthy and finding a way. All right, let's go inside the huddle with Notre Dame head coach Neil Ivey. And there's no doubt about it. You know it's a game of runs. You're playing in Gamble Pavilion in front of a capacity crowd. They're going to make runs. It's can you answer them? 
When the moment gets heavy, you can't get tight. You got to continue to make plays. On the road, Miel Ivey hired in 2020 at her alma mater for her first head coaching job. That back-to-back 24-plus -back win seasons and Sweet 16s as well. ACC Coach of the Year in 23. She's got a great player that may resemble how she played in Hidalgo, who has 21 points. Oh, Neil Ivey does a great job of after timeout execution. UConn goes zone, takes him out of it. Numbers, Beckers, extra pass, maybe too much. Yep, overpassing. And a travel. And Gino's gonna look at Paige Beckers and be like, what are you doing? Shoot the ball. Our game's tied at 50 between Notre Dame and UConn, two top 25 teams. And this is one of the great rivalries in women's basketball in the 2001 Final Four. Notre Dame overcame a 16-point deficit to beat number one UConn, 90-75. Coach Ivey was on that team from 2011 to 2013. The two programs met in three consecutive Final Four. Notre Dame winning two. UConn won back-to-back -back national titles over Notre Dame in 14 and 15. And the Irish took down UConn in back-to-back -back Final Fours in 18 and 19. And the stars tonight, Hannah Hidalgo, the young man from, the young woman, excuse me, from South Jersey, and Aliyah Edwards, the Canadian international with 20. And you've got to think, Paige Beckers is going to start heating up here before too long, but Hannah Hidalgo really carrying the load, Aliyah Edwards as well for Connecticut. They don't have an answer inside for her. And when you look at this Notre Dame program, Muff Raw, I tell yes. you, what a coach. Outstanding and built this program and so many great players who have come through this program as well and, you know, It's continued the legacy and, and what an opportunity for Neil Ivey the coach that she played for and to continue her legacy at Notre Dame while creating her own Robert Nine final fours and two national championships while coaching at Notre Dame turned the program over four years ago to one of her best players in Neil Ivey in the corner D. That one short to Ashley Shade. Offensive rebound, Edwards. KK. All day. KK Arnold, baby. Freshman. Mm -hmm. ah. Connecticut back on top, 53 to 50. They last led it, 32 to 30. How will Notre Dame respond? They went into a massive scoring drop in the fourth quarter against Syracuse on Thursday. And Syracuse outscored a 14 to 1 with eight minutes left. And you're right, it had trouble with that Syracuse zone, right? And UConn showing the zone right now as well. West Bell with the bucket. One point lead for Connecticut. Huskies have won 13 in a row. Beckers. Here's Edwards. She's been destroying opponents down here, and she continues to be the destroyer. 22 points for Aaliyah Edwards. 55-52. Her season high, 26 inside the Dalago. Hannah and her sisters came to stores to play. 55-54, we've got a game. Off the front rim, no good this time for Mule. Cross court, transfer. Guarded by Beckers, drives on it. Reverse layup, no. Loose ball picked up, Connecticut, here they come. Mule, KK, hands it off. Shade, and she banks it down, Connecticut. Running, gunning, and funning right now. 57 54. Hey, do you know what Emma said? We have these young players on the floor and in the rotation. We play faster. We get up and down the floor, and they certainly do. Westbrook. Levels it at 57. Maddie with 15. Syracuse game, they may have been caught looking ahead. Yes, yes, and Maddie Westbell is a player who started every game of her career. She's been with Neil Ivey since Neil Ivey took over this program. She understands these moments. That was a big-time bucket. Hidalgo 
Got hands on the basketball, knocked out of bounds. They say it's last touch by UConn. Well, out in transition, KK Arnold draws the defender, finds Ashlyn Shade, and that's the fourth foul, I believe, on Nika Mule. That's a big play right there. Loose ball, Hannah Hidalgo is going after it. Nika Mule called for the foul. She was on the bench in that first half with three fouls. Nice Brady ready to check in for Connecticut. Nika Mule from Croatia. Zagreb. 57 up. 115 to go. Third quarter. Hidalgo hesitates. Kicks it up top. Westbound. Off the heel. Long rebound. Aliyah Edwards and a five coming up on Bransford. Because I'm just so impressed with, and continue to be impressed with Aliyah Edwards and the way she pursues the rebounds. I mean, this is an out of area rebound. This is giving your team possessions, and she just goes after it. The 2023 Big East Tournament most outstanding player. Edwards, 58 points, 40 rebounds, five blocks in three games. And this will go against Connecticut. A foul on KK Arnold. Yeah, KK Arnold didn't quite get set on that screen. I like the action that Connecticut was going to. Trying to get Paige Beckers a touch. 45 seconds remaining in the third. Citron in the corner. Westbell, great look and buries it. Maddie Westbell oh, had 10 points on Thursday against Syracuse on four of 10 shooting in 31 minutes. She has 18 tonight. And it's so tough when you have a pick and pop big and a guard who can score it coming off of that two man. Beckers. 17 seconds to go. Shot clock turned off. As Hidalgo crosses the midcourt line. Here comes Marshall the screen. Hidalgo keeps the dribble alive. Crosses over, gets to the top. Lost it on the way up. In the front court, Becker's rising fire. And that's the end of the quarter. And what a quarter it was. Notre Dame with a 60 to 57 lead heading into the fourth. Big-time shots and big-time shot makers. Hannah Hidalgo's all energy. Aaliyah Edwards, every answer. Fox Primetime Hoops is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Welcome back to Storm. Gamble Pavilion. And the score, 60-57. to 57, Notre Dame leading on the road. And the scoring by quarters. Let's take a look at the game summary sponsored by Progressive. Get slammed, dunk, saving today. What jumps out at? The Irish continuing to dominate points in the paint, finding ways to get easy buckets, shooting at 52% from the floor. But I'll tell you what, Hannah Hidalgo continues to rise to the occasion. No moment is too big for this young player. 25 points. 10 of 17 from the floor, three of four from the three-point line is making every right play. The competitive fire, the energy, the leadership as a young player that she brings to this ball club is unmatched. McDonald's All-American. She broke the McDonald's All-American game record with 26 points. So she can score against anybody. And she's proving it as a freshman. You know who I think of when I see this young lady play? Who's that? I feel like I'm watching a little Jalen Brunson at Oh, yeah, yeah. A little bit strong lower body. Inside, Bransford can't keep her footing, lost an egg. Becker's the other way to the top and five. And an injured player on the other side. KK Bransford holding her ankle. Here's a young lady that has scored 57 points over the last six games. So really starting to score the ball well coming off the bench. Well, KK Bransford, as she's attacking, I think you're right. I think she rolled that ankle. 
And she was a player who was injured at the beginning of the year, missed the first few games of the season, was working her way back, has been critical off the bench for this Irish team. And Had a leg injury, that's why she missed. Yes. She walks off tenderly. 2023 ACC all freshman team, double digits in 12 games last season. And there are a lot of injured Irish players over there on the side as well. And, you know, you think about playing, Olivia Miles right there has not played the entire season. And will not play, she told us today. Will not play. Injured her, her knee the last regular season game a year ago. Kassan Prosper on the bench with a lower leg injury as well. All right, what's the book on PB? Hey, Paige Beckers is tough. She's resilient. She's battled through multiple injuries. She's a straight bucket getter, and I look for her to try to take over this fourth quarter. 60 to 59, she has 11. And on the season, Paige Beckers averaging 20. Under 10 to go. Hidalgo. And a foul coming up. This one against Mule. And I believe Nika Mule is fouled out of this game. Yeah, just contact right there. You've got to know when you've got four fouls that you can't take this chance. Just got to play good position defense. And Nika Mule not able to stop quick enough. Remember, Connecticut, like Notre Dame, struggling with their depth. So with Mule fouling out, you know, Oriana telling us yesterday that he's only going to play seven. KK Arnold with the steal. He's got shade on the wing. Arnold to the hole. Rims off. Marshall trying to hold on to the rebound. Jump ball is the call. And the arrow favors UConn. And those are the kind of plays you need from Ice Brady. She's got to come in and be an impact. And it doesn't have to be scoring the basketball. Little things like this. You know, KK Arnold goes to the rim. She doesn't get it. Nat Marshall gets the rebound, but Ice Brady right there. Able to get two hands on it tied up. Arnold the inbound. Leah Edwards having a big night inside. Ice. And foul. I think if you're Nat Marshall in that situation, you just got to stay vertical. You got to force Ice Brady to make a move one on one. That's third foul on Marshall, who's done a nice job off the bench this evening. Ice Brady at the line. Four points against Marquette on Tuesday in 22 minutes. 50% free throw shooter. Brady missed last season after dislocating her right kneecap before the season. 60 up, 11, nine minutes to play in the fourth quarter from the home of champions. Scores Connecticut, eight tie of the game. The Wolf, cross court, Citron goes up high. You gotta get Manny Westbelt back in the two man. You were getting pick and pop all day long. The dog will turn. Hannah Hidalgo with 27. Yeah, she elevated and shot that over Leah Edwards. She's 5'6", folks. Hannah Hidalgo. Becker looking for a shot. Fades from 16 off the heel. Citron claims it. And Adalgo will take her time as we approach the eight-minute mark of the fourth quarter. And I like this right here. Get Maddie Westbelt back involved. You draw two right there. Timing. She's going to be open. That pass could have been a little quicker. They get it back to her. The Wolf inside. Marshall, good position and five. I mean, Hannah Hidalgo just is so explosive to the rim. She gets by you straight line, elevates over, shoots it off the glass. Not looking for a foul, not off balance, finishes strong. So Natalia Marshall, first free throw is good, but she affectionately is known as Nat. 
tore ACL in high school, which caused her to go 22 months without playing a game and delayed her Notre Dame debut with the redshirt season. And that Marshall's another, another one of those players who first couple years in the program didn't get a lot of minutes. Stuck with it, continued to get better, and was ready when her number was called. Notre Dame up by four. Can they hold on? UConn has won 13 straight. Notre Dame had their four-game winning streak snapped on Thursday at home to Syracuse. Beckers to the cup. The roller, no. Nice rebound. Citron not afraid to get her nose bloody. And Paige Beckers just has not been able to find it on the offensive end. No rhythm. And they'll go again. Another easy layup. Keep those two in the two-man game, right there. Hidalgo's gonna draw traffic, she's gonna score it, or she's gonna find West Bell. 66 to 60. Hannah Hidalgo putting on a show. Absolutely, it's a clinic right here in the two-man. Rotation's not there, doesn't commit. She's able to get there, elevate, finish in traffic. Irish up six. Tomorrow on Fox, Jared Goff aims to lead the Lions to their first ever Super Bowl while Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, and the top seeded Niners await the NFC Championship game Sunday at 6 Eastern on Fox. Debo Samuel is supposed to be back from that shoulder injury to play in this game for San Francisco. As you take a look at the tail of the tape, opponents' points per game, Detroit giving up 22, Niners 17. Otherwise, as you take a look at the game reset, Notre Dame up by six with 7.15 remaining. Irish with three timeouts, Huskies with two. And the possession arrow in the favor of the Fighting Irish in the foul trouble. Adaldo and Marshall with three. Mule is fouled out. Off night, though, so far for Paige Becker. Yeah, shoots at 57% from the floor, 3 of 14. She's seeing multiple blue jerseys, every possession. The easiest bucket she got was when she was at the elbow with Aaliyah Edwards, and they let her run a little on-ball screen action. We'll see if they come back to her. Citron has done a nice job on Beckers tonight. She's used her length and her height to slow her down, contesting everything. Arnold, stop and start. That one off the window, rims around and out. Kylie Watson with the rebound to Hidalgo. A career high, 32 points. She's got some 29 right now. Off the heel. And that was one you want to have back if you're Hannah Hidalgo. You draw, you drew two defenders. Maddie Westbelt is right there on the pop. Beckers inside, wrapped it around in a whistle. I like using those two in the two man and the L Ivy going to it. Now it's about just making the right plays and making the right reads. Talked to DL Ivy today at their shoot around. I said, Do you think you can win this game? She said, I think we can win any game. Yep. All we have to do is focus, commit, and be disciplined. And that was her challenge to this team to be locked in. They were not locked in against Syracuse. Nice Brady. Arnold, Brady, lefty, baseline jump shot off the back rim, no. That's the shot you want if you're Notre Dame. You want Ice Brady taking pull-up jumpers. You want to cover the three-point shooters and Ashley Shea to Paige Beckers. Bransford back in for Notre Dame after going out with a small injury. Hidalgo turns again up top. Now shoot that one. West Belt shoots it. Boom. I think she passed up an open three. She has 20. It's got to be a steady diet of those two down the stretch. 68-60. 5.44 to go. Beckers. And goes it. Plus the five. I mean, you know Paige Beckers when the moment needs to be made and a play needs to be made, she's going to make it. And that was just a great job of shooting over two defenders. The contact coming across, able to stay locked in and finish. At 26 against Marquette on Tuesday on 11 of 18 shooting in 32 minutes. Adds a free throw. 68-63. Notre Dame. UConn changing their defense. 
back to this 2-3 zone that caused Notre Dame to get stagnant. Hidalgo, blitz, floater, yeah. and good! Woo! This young lady can play the game. 70 to 63. Hannah Hidalgo leading the way for Notre Dame. Hidalgo now with 31 points, seven rebounds, five assists. This is just attacking right through the middle of the zone. KK Bransford gives her a little brush screen, but she's so good with that floater. Great touch around the rim. And that's the thing about attacking a zone. You don't want to get stagnant and pass the ball around the perimeter. You can still find your driving lanes. You can still use on-ball screens. I asked her at the shoot around the day, I said, how'd you get so good in basketball? You're so tiny. She said, my dad was my coach, my mom's a ref. We just love the game in our family. She grew up with brothers. We play against them every day. And she is killing the game. Back door, Hidalgo beats Watson again. West Bell to a cut and six rocks, squeezed it in. What a play by Sonia Citron. There was not a lot of space to operate. 72-64, how about this? UConn on the ropes. They've gotten away from going to Aaliyah Edwards. That ball kicked West Belt. Just when you think they're under duress, clock winding down, Sonia Citron, great jet cut. Attacks on that baseline, sees the mismatch, is able to operate in the small space. Ice right, Brady. KK Arnold driving. Floater, no. Hidalgo, another rebound. Her seventh. Bransford. Notre Dame in no rush as we hit the four-minute mark. Citron, step back, Jay. Long rebound. Hidalgo has it at a new shot clock. And a foul called on Arnold. The LIB over there orchestrating and dictating. Getting Kylie Watson out of the play, creating space for Hannah Hidalgo to go to work. Dame did the shoot around today, and Coach Ivy was on the sideline before while the young ladies were stretching, and she was watching a game. I said, who are you watching? She said, I'm watching an NBA game. I said, who's playing? He said, my son. Uh -huh. She said, my son. Early game for the Pistons. Hidalgo. West Bell. Again! Maddie Fresh! 75 to 64. Largest lead of the game for Notre Dame. Neil Ivey says, Maddie Westfeld is our glue. She understands what we want. She understands the moment. She's been in the environment. Knocking down a big three. As you take a look at Hidalgo and Westbell, yes. big night. They certainly are. And you know, Maddie Westbell, her sister Kat, played in this program as well. Both have reached a thousand points at Notre Dame. Throughout the course of, of this Notre Dame program, the Westbells, and you certainly have them. You got the Maybreeze and Michaela over there on, on the bench is now an assistant coach. There's a lot of three-point shots coming from those two families. Second free throw for Edwards off the mark. Last year, Maddie Westbelt, 17 points, nine rebounds, four assists, three blocks against UConn. And a timeout on the floor. Called by the Irish. Next Saturday on Fox Primetime Hoops. Mama, here comes that young lady. Get ready for some Caitlin Clark in your life as the biggest star in college basketball leads fifth-ranked Iowa against Maryland. It all tips off next Saturday at 8 Eastern on Fox Prime Time Hoops.
And let's take a look at the all-time leading scores in women's history. Well, Caitlin Clark inching up on Jackie Styles. Kelsey Mitchell certainly had an outstanding career and continues it at the next level. And Kelsey Plum, Plum Dogs, the one that she is chasing, and a realistic opportunity to get her before the postseason. How's Kelsey playing in the W? Oh, she's playing great. Two championships. She is playing great. As you take a look at the game reset, Notre Dame up 75 to 65. They also have the arrow in their favor. Clock management, time and score, making you get the, making sure you get the best shot on the floor, and then defensively defending without fouling, staying disciplined. But boy, Maddie Westbell in this second half, but particularly in this fourth quarter, has been big. The pick and pop has been there, attacking off the bounce. Again, not afraid of the moment, and she's a player on this team. The L. Ivy calls our glue. She's been with the L. Ivy since she's become the head coach at Notre Dame. She started every game of her career. She is consistent, she is poised, and she is stepping up big. Missed one game in her career against North Carolina. Now Hidalgo takes her time. She works the clock. Ten-point lead for the Irish. Three minutes away from going back to South Bend. Happy. Aaliyah Edwards with the rebound. Becker's got to hurry now. This UConn team has to hurry. They need points in bunches. Becker. Baseline. Ice Brady. Picked up Hidalgo. Hidalgo driving, Matador defense, and counted and the foul. The C parted for Hannah Hidalgo. That is just a complete breakdown on the defensive end of the floor by the Huskies. Paige Beckers is trailing the play. Nobody steps up to stop the ball. And Hannah Hidalgo continues to just get paint points and buckets. In the end, one career high 33 now in what could possibly be the most high-profile game of her young career. This is the most against UConn this season. 34 points now. Sonia Rivers from NC State also had a great game against Connecticut. Beckers, a 16-foot save, goes down. They need more of that in a hurry. She has 17. And now you got to come with the pressure. Right? You got to force some turnovers. You got to get some deflections that lead to steals. Can't be soft on the ball. You got to be more aggressive than that. Citra, very confident with the basketball. Guarded by Becker. Citra, looked like she traveled. They give it to her, and she banks it down and one. Did she bring that back to the left? Yes, she did. Oh, my goodness, Sonia Citra. The patience, the poise, forcing the D to commit, bringing it back to the left hand and getting in one. I mean, this is just a great individual effort, recognizing the mismatch, continuing to attack the paint. The Irish have dominated in that blue paint area. So the combination, the trio rather, of Citron, Westbell, and Hidalgo. Leading this team on the road. 81-67, under two minutes to play. Becker. Top of the key. Citron with another rebound. Five rebounds for Citron. And they use both Hidalgo and Citron at the point. Both of them great with the basketball. Low turnovers for Notre Dame tonight. And a five with 128 to play. So let's take a look at the upcoming schedules, and we'll start with the Fighting Irish. Yeah, I mean, this was a quick turnaround for the Irish, and they come back and they go to Georgia Tech, play at home against Pitt, a team that took them down to the wire on the road in Pittsburgh, and then it doesn't get any easier. Three top 25 matchups. Well, Coach Ivy has her team, had her team so well prepared and confident coming into one of the most hostile environments you will see in college basketball. Well, no doubt about it. And I asked Neil about 
you know, hey, what is it going to take to bounce back from a disappointing loss at Syracuse? She said, the good thing is we don't have a lot of time. Well, I've, I've challenged our team to be more locked in and focused on the details, and sure, they have tonight. Shade comes up short. Citron with her sixth rebound. Notre Dame is dominated in the paint. 46 to 26. A lot of dribble drives by this young lady. Hannah Hidalgo of Puerto Rican descent. Under a minute to go. Inside Westbell. As Becker steps in and makes the steal. KK Arnold. Brick. West Bell with the rebound and Notre Dame. How about this? Hidago, 34 points, 10 rebounds, her sixth double double of the season. Folks, she's a freshman. She's 5'6. Unbelievable talent. You can't measure the heart, the competitive spirit, the will to win, the willingness to sacrifice. Off the back rim, Citron kept it alive, and that should do it. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish come in the stores. The House of Champions and end Gina Oriema's 13-game winning streak with an 82-67 win. Oh, what an outstanding effort by the Irish to come in here to make runs, answer runs, and come away with the victory. Notre Dame improves to 15 and 4. Connecticut falling to 17 and 4. For Stephanie White, this is Gus Johnson saying so long from stores. Great game in front of some legends like Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird. You've been watching Fox.